Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Math Time with Mrs. Idas. I am so excited today because we are going to use lines and shapes to make a beautiful artistic pumpkin. Do you remember when at the beginning of the year we were talking about shapes and the different kinds of lines and spirals, zigzags, different form ways to form shapes and lines doing Monart. I love that lesson and we're going to be able to incorporate this lesson again today. Do you know a long time ago there was a famous artist. His name was Albrecht Dürer and he used to carve little pieces to make amazing stamp art. Well, today's project for art and math is going to be inspired by this artist, Albrecht Dürer. He used to observe a lot of things in nature's, for instance, pumpkins. So let's go ahead and take a look at some real pumpkins and some decorative pumpkins and notice what kind of shapes and lines and curves they have. So I have here some fun pumpkins. I have this green Cinderella pumpkin. Do you notice all of these curved lines and ridges? They're all made with curves. You might even notice some little dashes like diagonal lines and speckles. If I turn it over, you might even notice swirls and dots. Isn't this amazing? Nature is so awesome. Let's take a look at this Cinderella pumpkin. Wow, you might notice some zigzags, some deep grooves, some swirls of the vines. Look at this, zigzag. Wow, that's amazing. I even have this little tiny tiger pumpkin. Look at this, dark lines, thick lines, thin lines, speckles that look like little dots. Even some pumpkins are just plain and smooth. That's amazing. Have you ever seen some decorative pumpkins around? Maybe when you go to the store or when you decorate your home? Some pumpkins might have zigzags. How fun is that? Even like in a pattern. Orange, white, orange, white. Some decorative pumpkins have zigzag triangly spikes. And some decorative pumpkins even have curly twirly vines and polka dots. They might even look sparkly. Look at these zigzags and toothed edges of the leaves. Isn't that fun, boys and girls? So let's get started. Today, you will just need a white piece of paper. If you still have some orange construction paper left over, we can use this to back up our artwork. If you don't, don't worry. This is just going to be an example today. But let me show you what we can do with our white piece of paper. So first of all, it needs to be horizontal. That means it is long left to right. And you will need your flare pen or a thick marker to make these designs. Today, I'm going to use a thick marker so you can see it better on the video. If you don't have a thick marker, don't worry, just use your flare pin. Let's begin, friends. So, caps on the back, and the first shape we are going to make for our Monart pumpkin, influenced by the artist Albert Durer, is a big oval in the center of our paper. So let's start at the top and we're going to make a nice big oval in the center of our page. Very good friends, a nice big oval. Now we're going to put another curve, like a letter C, to the left of the oval. So come to the top, curve up and around and back in. Beautiful. Let's do the same on the other side, but this will be like a backward C curve. So from the top, curve up and around and back in. Excellent job, friends. Now, to give our pumpkin a little bit more dimension, we are going to make another curve on this side, very close to the first curve we made. So curve around to the left. Come back in, 
Great job. Let's do the same on the right. Close curve, following the same shape you made, down and curve up. Excellent. Now we need to add another curve on the top and the bottom, like a rainbow curve at the top and a smiley curve at the bottom. Excellent. Now, inside of these close edges, we're going to make a zigzag like we saw on some of our pumpkins. So we're going to go like this, up, down, up, down, all the way inside of this pumpkin border. It's just a zigzag, 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 all the way around. Very nice, friends. We're going to do the same inside this border on the right side. So remember, zigzag, zigzag. Make sure your points of your zigzag are touching the lines so there's no gaps in our zigzag from the top to the bottom. It's just like making little triangles. Do you see that? Kind of like our spiky pumpkin. Pumpkins have lots of different textures in nature and in decorations. Now, here on the top and the bottom, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a little zigzag inside to match. And this way, our pumpkin will have a zigzag border. Great job, friends. Excellent. So, inside the middle of the circle, since the middle is not just flat, but curved and comes towards us, we're also going to make a zigzag pattern. So we're going to make another smaller oval within the bigger oval, very close to the edges of the first line we made. But this time, we are not going to put a zigzag. We are going to put little tiny polka dots, just like speckled, like this pumpkin. So. This is called pointillism, and another famous artist, Surat, used to paint all their pictures with little tiny polka dots. So I want you to very gently, don't go bang, 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 but very gently just tap some little dots inside, and this technique is called pointillism. Pointillism. Can you say pointillism? It's like we're making lots of little dots, little points, very close together to fill in the picture. And it's a really timely art form when you do it very specifically. It looks, when you're standing far behind the painting, further back, it looks like everything is just painted. But the closer you get to the paintings, the more you see that it's actually made of all kinds of little tiny polka dots. So that's pretty amazing. But just for now, we're going to go inside and do our best inside this border to add little tiny dots like speckles on a real pumpkin or even a decorative pumpkin. And you are practicing different art techniques. Beautiful. Great job, friends. Yes, all you need to do is lightly tap. You don't have to bang hard. We don't want to hurt our marker. Great job all the way around. And you know what? You can even go back later and fill in any spots that you think need some more polka dots. All right, so we started with our curved ovals, some curved lines, then we had some zigzags, and pointillism polka dots. So the next thing we can add are some stripes, diagonal lines. Let's try it. So inside this pumpkin piece, we're going to make some diagonal lines that start from the top and go diagonally down to the left. Let's try together. So start from the top and make a diagonal down. Excellent. Put a space and we're going to continue making diagonal lines down the center. See if you can keep your spacing the same and your diagonals the same angle. Try your best, go slow. Very nice. This is adding a different type of texture to the pumpkin. If this was carved out on a piece of wood, 
it would make a very interesting stamp. Good job, friends. A diagonal line going at an angle down to the left on the left side. Beautiful. Now we're going to do the same on the right side, but this time our diagonal is going to go down to the right. Let's try it, friends. Start at the top and make a diagonal down to the right this way. Very good. So remember, keep your spacing the same and go all the way from one side to the next. And these lines kind of give the pumpkin some movement called action. Sometimes in art, the lines and the curves provide a type of action for our eyes. It kind of makes the picture look like it's moving. All right, we are done with the left, we are done with the right. All we need to do now is complete the center. So we are going to make a spiral in the center. We're going to start small and then get our spiral to be bigger and bigger and bigger until it fills up the entire middle oval. So let's begin here in the center and we're going to make a spiral starting small, going around and around, up and around and around. If you get to an edge, that's okay. Just skip your pin down and come back up. When you reach the line, skip up and then you can start making some curves to finish up the rest of that oval. Now look, it looks like a spinning illusion, doesn't it? How fun. All that we need to do now is make a stem that was once part of a twirly whirly vine. So up at the tippy top, you're going to make a straight line and a straight line. And then we're going to make an oval, a horizontal oval to connect those lines. Very good. Inside the stem, we're going to put some straight lines going down and another little spiral in top of the oval. Great job, friends. Let's make our twirly whirly vine by making a curve that goes up, down and around, down, up and around, Curve down and around and out. Excellent. Beautiful job, friends. Now every artist signs their name at the bottom because artists are proud of their work. Can you make your name so nice and neatly down in the corner? Look at this beautiful pumpkin you made using curves, lines, diagonals, zigzags, spirals, ovals, oh my goodness, and even dots. This looks just like a beautiful decorative pumpkin with some features that you might find on real pumpkins and some features you might find on fun decorating pumpkins. Now, if you have that orange piece of paper, you can use it as a frame. If you don't, don't worry. You don't have to have an orange frame, but if you do, go ahead and turn your pumpkin page around. Put four dots of glue in the corner. One, two, three, four. You can use another color paper too, if you happen to have a different color. I liked orange because it just reminds me of pumpkins. And then you're going to center it in your page and press down the corners. And voila, you have a beautiful masterpiece of the month using our lines and shapes to make a beautiful, perfect pumpkin. I sure hope you had fun today, friends, learning about different artists and styles and technique, learning about how lines can add movement and texture to your work. And I can't wait to see you next time. Please share your art with us on Flipgrid. I can't wait to see. Bye, friends.